Hello, this is the May 2011 video edition of the Iowa General Fund Monthly Revenue Memo. I am Jeff Robinson, Senior Fiscal Analyst for the Iowa Legislative Services Agency, the nonpartisan support agency of the Iowa Legislature. This video covers the month of May 2011 and the first 11 months of cash fiscal year 2011, July through May. Net revenue for the month of May was $137.7 million above May 2010, an increase of 21.4%. This significant increase more than offsets the net revenue decline experienced in March and April this year, and it indicates the declines had more to do with deposit and refund timing than actual economic performance. The $782 million deposited in May makes it the second highest net revenue month in Iowa history trailing only May 2007's $792 million. The large dollar increase was driven by individual income tax payments with returns, corporate tax deposits, and reduced income tax refunds. On the negative side in May, individual income withholding tax was down for the month, and after adjusting for a calendar issue, was only mildly positive, while sales and use tax posted a 4.2% gain in May, Adjusting for calendar issues produces a month that was only modestly positive. Since withholding and sales and use tax are the main drivers of Iowa General Fund revenue, the poor showing in May bears watching in the upcoming months. There is one month left in the cash fiscal year and then three, the three-month hold open or accrual period before the books close on fiscal year 2011. With May's strong showing, year-to-date net revenue growth is now positive 6.3% on a cash basis, about 1.3 percentage points above the latest official revenue estimate, with transfer revenue excluded. This translates to about $64 million annualized. May 31, 2010 fell on a holiday last year, and that pushed about $20 million in revenue into June of 2010. Adjusting for this, the current excess revenue is more like $44 million. Let's first have a look at net receipts by month over the most recent 13 months. Revenue increase months are colored blue and decrease months are red. The chart shows that May's $137.7 million increase more than offsets the March and April declines and makes the revenue picture since last August appear much brighter than it did at the end of April. Of all the categories of revenue deposits, only tobacco tax and institutional payments posted declines in May. Personal income tax, corporate tax, and inheritance tax all registered double-digit gains. Personal income tax revenue is the most significant source of general fund revenue, and it has now been positive for 12 consecutive months. Withholding tax deposits are up 5.2% year-to-date. However, the increase over the most recent three months is only 3.2%. This slowdown in the growth rate can be somewhat expected since the revenue turnaround for Iowa began in March of 2010 making year-over-year -year increases more difficult by now. May's $12 million increase in sales and use tax sounds good on the surface, but sales and use tax was positively impacted by a calendar issue at both ends of the month. This issue explains most of the revenue gain in May. Corporate tax revenue posted only its fourth gain in the past year, but the gain was sizable at $26 million. Despite the large gain, corporate tax is below last year's level and also modestly below projections. Tax refunds issued in February, March, and April increased, but May showed a large decrease, indicating that tax refunds were requested and or issued faster this year than last. The May drop puts actual tax refunds in line with projections for the year. This table from the front of the printed general fund monthly revenue memo computes how net revenues are doing compared to the most recent revenue estimate. That estimate calls for 4.99% growth over fiscal year 2010's $4.49 billion. Year-to-date, revenue is up $313.4 million, and that amount of growth exceeds the $274.3 million in growth projected for the entire fiscal year. A final graph shows the long-term trend of Iowa net general fund revenue with its peak of October 2008 and the trough of February 2010. Peak to trough, the decline was 10.7%. Over the 15 months since revenue bottomed, about 55% of the decline has been retraced, and another 5% gain is needed just to reach the prior peak. 
In summary, May revenue was up more than 21% compared to the previous May, more than replacing the revenue reductions shown in the previous two months. While May's large increase is real, it has more to do with the timing of tax refunds and tax payment deposits than basic economic performance. The main drivers of general fund revenue, namely individual income tax and sales and use tax, remain nicely positive year to date, although withholding and sales and use tax revenue must be monitored for signs of weakening. Year to date, net revenue growth is now back above projections, with one month and the, and the accrual period remaining in fiscal year 2011. A calendar issue will start June off about $20 million in the hole compared to last June. While general fund revenue has improved significantly over the past 15 months, an additional 5% increase is necessary just to get back to an income level first achieved two and a half years ago. I thank you for your interest in Iowa general fund revenue and please check out the next monthly video memo in early July.